Hey everyone, uh, welcome back. Um, today's video is going to be a book haul, as indicated by the title. Um, I didn't think to count how many books I have. I'll try and count them afterwards and, and maybe include it in the title, because that kind of seems to be the thing to do. To be fair, I, I have quite a few books, but it's spread out over a couple of different purchases. I had planned, I had bought some and planned on doing a book haul video, and then I was filming videos and then realized that I had misplaced the cord to put the videos on my computer. So I had to order that and that kind of slowed me down a little bit. So I'm just going to do one major one. Most of these came from thrift shops. Uh, also got a couple at um, Second and Charles, which is like a used bookstore. I think actually uh, Books A Million owns them, but they're absolutely incredible. It's one of my wife and I's favorite place. And then we actually ordered four, five, six books, I think five, uh, from bookoutlet.com we'd never done before, um, but had a pretty positive experience there. So I'm going to kind of separate them um, by that. Oh, also, um, there's a used bookstore in uh, Lancaster, Pennsylvania called Dogstar Books. It is my favorite independently owned used bookstore. Um, they deal with a lot of, they have an incredible selection of vintage books. Uh, they do a lot of they buy a lot of estate sales. They have just, it, it, it's in, incredible. I've been in there three or four times now. It's just, I have a hard time tearing myself away from there. It's just, it, it's incredible. There's so much to look at. And they seem to have pretty good prices. I mean, it's vintage books, so you can pay a pretty penny for them. But I got a couple of books from there. Ooh, I, I had a video planned kind of explaining my wife and I's book collection and, and breaking it down, but it was a little bit boring. Um, so I'm gonna try and quickly and explain. My wife and I, we buy a lot of books, and it, they basically break down into three sections. They're my books, her books, and our books. Um, our books typically consist of children's books, and that kind of breaks down further into two categories. We collect vintage children's books. My wife started it, started doing it before we even got married, and I really like the idea. Um, we collect mostly Stratemeyer Syndicate books, which was the uh, book packaging company that did Hardy Boys, Nancy Drew, they did Tom Swift, um, Dana Girls, Bobsy Twins, they, they published like over 1200 books under, um, I don't know, 40 or 50 pseudonyms. So we collect a lot of those. And then, you know, other children's books, we just like the idea of having a children's library for when we have kids and hopefully they enjoy reading somewhere near as much as us. Um, and then we also kind of share in some like mysteries. She kind of she tends to go to a lot of more of the romantic and like chit lit mysteries than I do. But still, there's some books we agree on there. Her category is a lot of said mystery. Um, she reads a lot of romance books and basically anything Jane Austen. She's a huge Jane Austen fan, huge fan of Jane Austen fan fiction. Whereas mine break down more into uh, fantasy, science fiction, uh, non-fiction. Uh, I was a history major, so I enjoy reading uh, non-fiction, especially around like the, the World War II. Always interested in that area. I'm gonna start with the children's books because we actually found a bunch at a thrift shop. One of the first books we got is These Happy Golden Years by Laura Ingalls Wilder. Um, we have a bunch of oh, Laura Ingalls Wild, Wilder books. I've never read them. My wife has. She really likes them. So that was a, a pretty cool find. We also have got um, Joe's Boys by Louisa May Alcott. Again, I've never read anything by Louisa May Alcott. I probably should. Um, my wife has and she really likes her. So we picked up that one. And we also found a bunch of Donna Parkers. This is a, a, a obviously a series for girls. We found, I don't know, like seven or eight. So the first one is Donna Parker Takes a Giant Step. Second one is On Her Own. Third one is A Spring to Remember. Um, and then Donna Parker, Special Agent. Of all the ones we bought, this would be the one that I'd be most interested to read. Um, the other one's not bad, though. Donna Parker, Mystery at Arrow Park. Again, the mystery seems interesting. Mystery part of it, I guess. Uh, then at Cherrydale. Again, they're really pretty books. This style doesn't tend to hold up a lot. Um, hold up very well, but still, the, these are all in pretty good condition. Um, Jenny Gordon and the Lending Library. No, that's actually Jenny Gordon, that's not Donna Parker. Okay, Jenny, Bord Jenny Gordon is another girl series. Again, I think my wife has read a couple of them. We actually had this book already, but it was in pretty rough shape, and this one was a dollar. All these were actually a dollar. 
And then we also got Bobsy Twins at the Seashore. Again, um, those, the Jenny Gordon and, and Donna Parker are just random girl series. Bobsy Twins, like, like I mentioned, is one of the books published by the Stratemeyer Syndicate. We already have quite a few, but we didn't have one of one in this style. So again, it was a dollar, so it's kind of hard to miss. Then at Second and Charles, um, the, the main part of our Stratemeyer collection, like I said, there's they published over 1,200 books. They have lots of children's series. But uh, the big bulk of our Stratemeyer Syndicate collection is we collect um, the 60s uh, pictorial covers of Hardy Boys and Nancy Drew. I think there's 59 books in the original Hardy Boys canon and like 56 or 57 in the Nancy Drew. And we're probably down to only lacking, I think, double digits in both of them. Uh, but we found four Hardy Boys and three Nancy Drews at Second and Charles, and they were all buck or two, uh, two or three bucks a piece. And they're all in pretty good shape too. But the first one in the Hardy Boys is book number 53, Clue of the Hissing Serpent. Um, then we have book number 52, The Shattered Helmet. Then book 56, uh, The Jungle Pyramid. And book 11, While the Clock Ticked. This is actually the first Hardy Boys that I ever read. Um, and I can't believe I didn't already own it, but so I was especially excited about this one. Um, and then in Nancy Drew's, we got book 28, The Clue of the Black Keys. And then we got book 47, The Mysterious Mannequin. Seems kind of like a creepy storyline if you ask me, but I've never read it. And then uh, book 49, Secret of Mirror Bay. So we were very excited about those. Like I said, we're getting very close to finishing having at least one book in both the Hardy Boys and Nancy Drew canons, which if you don't know, there's lots of Hardy Boys and Nancy Drew books and there's lots of different series, but the canon is, and there's debate over it, but the most widely accepted definition of the canon was like the first run of both series. Like I said, the Hardy Boys got 59, Nancy Drew I think got like 56. I can't remember, it was a book or two less than the Hardy Boys for whatever reason. Um, but then, by the same, in the, in the same collection in uh, First to Stratemeyer Syndicate, I also found, and these two are at Dog Star Books. I had a few extra bucks and a few hours one day, so I ran over there. Um, but I found Ralph and the Switch T Tower by Alan Chapman, um, which Ralph of the Railroad was actually the first book that Edward Stratemeyer, who founded the Stratemeyer Syndicate, published under the Stratemeyer Syndicate, like, once he created it. So I was really excited to find this. It doesn't have a dust jacket, but it, it's in pretty good shape. It's still very much readable. So I was very excited about that. I also found um, The Radio Boys at Ocean Point by Alan Chapman. One of the things the Stratemeyer Syndicate did is once they got a, established, a series established with a certain author, which wasn't actually an author, what they did is they use ghost writers. Um, Edward Stratemeyer, when the series, when the this syndicate started, would come up with the series idea and kind of the outline for the book, and then he would pay authors like a hundred dollars and send them the outline and have them write the book and then get it back to him. And uh, Edward Stratemeyer would edit them and then publish them under pseudonyms. Edward Stratemeyer would, once he got a series that was that was selling well under a pseudonym, he would publish another series under that same pseudonym to try and capitalize off of like the success of the quote-unquote author. Um, so Radio Boys was the second series done by this, under the pseudonym Alan Chapman, and I'm trying to get it to where you can see. It's, uh, glare is really annoying, sorry, but it's, it, this, this one actually has a dust jacket. It's really pretty. Um, and I didn't have any of the Radio Boys. I didn't have any of the Ralph of, in the in the Switch Tower, any Ralph of the Railroad books either. So I was very excited to find both of those. The next books I'm going to be showing you are books that we got from Book Outlet. Like I said, we got five of them. Um, the first one, this is one that my wife bought. It's the Social Suicide, or Social Suicide, by Jimma Halliday. There's not any glare on that. My wife is a huge fan of Jimma Halliday, um, but I think a lot of her books are, 
have very limited physical printings. She does a lot on ebooks. So these are actually, the, the, that was the first Gemma Halliday book my wife got and she was really excited. The second book she got was also a Gemma Halliday, it was Play Nice. And the cool thing about this one is I don't know if you can see, but it's actually a signed copy. Oh, that was weird. Turned down the lights for some reason. I think the signed copy was like eleven dollars, um, which is not bad for a signed copy. But so she was ecstatic about those two. Um, and then once I found out that she was ordering uh, or, or wanting to order off it, I kind of liked the idea of ordering a couple of books, mostly because I wanted. I'd never ordered anything off Book Outlet before, and I'd heard about it and kind of been intrigued. Um, so I got three books. The first one is The Abolition of Man by C.S. Lewis. This one was like two bucks. Um, I own a couple of C.S. Lewis's. Like I mentioned, I'm reading through a science fiction series by him, and he's a very good author. Not the most... He, his stories don't exactly suck you in, but I like his writing style. But anyway, so I was looking... Book Outlet didn't have a huge selection of his books, but they did have this one, so I snatched it up. Then I got... Um, Showdown by Ted Decker. This is one of a, 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 a Paradise novel. It's like, I think, one of four books um, in kind of like a series. And I have one of the other ones, and I think I might actually have two of the other ones. I'm trying to remember. He's done a couple of series, and he publishes so many books, I have a hard time following him. But anyway, this one, was again, was only three or four bucks. The only thing I didn't like about it is, if you can tell, it's kind of like the cover was creased here. But I'm trying to remember, I think I got that one from the scratch and dent section. It's still only like three or four bucks. Um, and, and, and I'm one of those people, when I buy books, I like them to be in, in, in as pristine condition as possible. So I was a little bit disappointed with that. But still, I mean, like I said, for three bucks, it's not bad. Um, and the one I was most excited about buying is Germ by Robert LaPerillo. I have no idea um, how to pronounce that last name. I apologize. I'm probably going to butcher a lot of pronunciations. I grew up, you know, I was born and raised for the first 23 years of my life in Texas. We don't put a huge emphasis on pronunciation. But anyway, this one I'm really excited about because a few years ago, probably like five or six years ago, I was in a, a, a bookstore and found one of his books called a Deadfall on Clarence. And bought it and had it on my shelf for a year or so and read it and it's one of my favorite books. It, it's just absolutely in incredible. Yeah, um, I can't vouch for any of his other writings but if you're looking for like a survival outdoor action adventure series, series book, I would highly recommend Deadfall by Robert Lou Perello, I guess.